For the task two essay, how to write an introduction? Keep it simple. That's always good advice. There should be a clear, effectively a paraphrase of the key terms and the key ideas within the question itself. There should be a, an outline and a, a thesis statement. There's different words for that in different books, but effectively you're, you're telling the reader what they are about to read. Um, even at that early point in the introduction. A good way of thinking that is the, the, the key topic and main ideas of your, your topic sentences of your two body paragraphs. The main ideas could and perhaps should be contained within that introduction. Try not to keep it too general. That, that's sometimes an error candidates can make. You try and, try and stick within the terms and the framing of the question. Try not to move it too general away from that main topic that's presented. But in theory, keep it simple. Tell the reader what you're going to tell them. And maybe most importantly, take a position. You know, if it's a, a, to what extent do you agree? The reader has to know at the very beginning in that introduction if you agree or disagree, how much you disagree or, or agree. That's important. If it asks you for your opinion, to take a position, you should state that early in the introduction. It should then be followed through through those body paragraphs and restated again in the conclusion. Um, tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, and in the conclusion, tell them what you've just told them. It's relatively simple. How to score seven plus in the IELTS writing section? There are various ways, but I think the, f the first thing candidates really have to be aware of is that entering into the test itself, they need to be approximately a band seven. It's unrealistic for a candidate who is studying at a, a band five to six level to make an assumption that they could just use some advice and jump up to a seven. They need to continue their learning um, and their language training for grammar, vocabulary, um, across all skills really. Once they're at that level, then there are things they can do. One thing they definitely can do is to go to IELTS.org. Um, they can access the public band score descriptors through that website. Now that's available for all candidates to see. They need to become quite familiar with the language used by IELTS um, in those band score descriptors. If they're pushing for a seven, they need to know what a seven is like the back of their hand. And really, they should be pushing for an eight. So they need to be very familiar with the language for task achievement and response, for vocabulary range and accuracy, for their grammar range and accuracy, coherence and cohesion. For the band they're looking for, in this case a seven, and the one above. I always recommend aim for the band above, and you're more likely to achieve the band that you're actually going for. Are there any words that you suggest that IELTS candidates must avoid in IELTS writing? Not especially. It's more about the overall style of writing that a candidate can produce how well they answer the question. Do they actually respond to the task well? Do they organize their writing in a, a well-organized introduction, two nicely organized body paragraphs with topic sentences, with main ideas then developed and expanded within those paragraphs, tied off neatly with a, you know, a good conclusion, stick to the main position through a piece of writing. When it comes to individual words to avoid, I'm not going to specifically say any. It, it would be wrong of me to. Try and avoid repetition, I think. You know, use paraphrasing skills to uh, avoid the repetition of uh, signposting language or key terms that are repeated through the writing that you produce. I guess the one area of language which most IELTS trainers recommend trying to avoid would be sort of slang, very, very informal, spoken, idiomatic language that would be okay in a conversation between two close friends in a coffee shop, but wouldn't really be appropriate for style 
and formality inside an, an IELTS writing answer. Generally try and avoid slang and very spoken idiomatic language. Thank you.